Good morning, everyone. <coughs> so I'm Jerry Zhao from Panasonic uh, Automotive Systems, and I also have another hat, which is uh, AGL uh, Software Defined Vehicle Expert Group Leader. Um, as Dan and Ward has mentioned uh, a lot about SDVEG, which gave me a lot of pressure. Um, so I will uh, give a oral introduction especially about the virtualization uh, approaches that uh, we are doing uh, in this uh, software defined expert group. So I, I saw a lot of uh, um, old friends and also a lot of new, new um, friends today. And uh, I think uh, this hash session, um, I, I will hope to, to give you a lot of uh, insights about uh, what we are doing in AGL. Um, so the over, over Agenda about today, for example, uh, I will give some backgrounds of the uh, SDV and uh, I will also uh, giving some um, introduction about the underlying uh, architect architecture changes in the automotive world towards this kind of software defined uh, vehicle architecture and also how and uh, what we are going to do in the uh, SDVEG of AGL. Um, so first, uh, let me go through some uh, industry backgrounds for this uh, software-defined vehicle. Um, so uh, the automotive industry is actually undergoing a, a, a drastic change uh, in the e-architecture and moving from a distributed uh, uh, architecture um, for, for of, the uh, of the electronic control unit, that is ECU, to a consolidated uh, high performance uh, computer, which is uh, called HPC. Um, along with this, the software stack uses a more open source and uh, de facto standards to optimize for an always connected and AI powered user experience. So these are not e independent uh, events, but underpinning that vehicles are rapidly adopting and uh, optimizing towards becoming software defined. As a result, the ability to speedily deliver the values to customers is becoming an even more important competing field in the SDV uh, world. So we can also um, explain SDV in this kind of way. Um, so, in fact, if we look at the independent research data, um, the complexity of the automotive software in cars that has been um, rapidly increasing since 2000, leading to a higher number of software-related re recalls and dec decreasing customer satisfaction. In addition, we see an increase of cost contribution by the factor of 2.5 times over the same time span, making the software cost dominant for the vehicle uh, as a product. This cost cannot be easily to be passed to the uh, customer, lowering the margins and creating cost control challenges for the automo automotive makers. So this is the exact same path that existing software a defined product uh, such as the computers and smartphones has already uh, followed. So in other words, SDV is actually a game changer. Those who can advance software more rapidly will gain the crucial com competitive advantages. However, it requires more than just a simple efforts such as increasing the, uh, the LS, LOC per month, month, just this kind of efficiency or having a larger organization uh, to, 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 to accelerate the software development. A shift in key strategies to sophistication of architecture, formation of ecosystem, and acceleration of product discovery will become more essential. So, in order to do that, we, we need to, to, to rethink what we should uh, develop a software. And uh, so this actually um, calling to, to a, a new approach, which is called software first, 
And this should be shifted from the original, or say the traditional method of hardware first. So on the left hand side, the traditional hardware first approach, where the hardware is first designed to define the product value, and then the software is developed to make it working. So it tends to result in a really long time to market. Also the software often needs to be reworked to match the, the hardware. So in the middle, you can see uh, to squeeze the time to market, uh, we can introduce the hardware emulation uh, to support software development, even if the actual hardware is not yet ready. Um, this is shifting to software defined a little bit slightly, but the idea of hardware defined, where hardware is de designed to realize the product value is the same as with the traditional approach. So you can see on the right hand side, what feeds in the SDV era best is a method of continuously evolving the software that realize the product values and with appropriate timing, develop the hardware that is optimized to run that software. So this cloud native approach is based on the idea that software is the source of innovation and the most expensive asset of the vehicle that will evolve over the vehicle's whole lifetime span. So I will also giving a introduction of the, of the um, underlying architecture changes in the automotive field. Um, so for the left hand side, uh, which is actually the traditional um, hardware or say you have a lot of ECUs and you, you, you define the architectures uh, for, for each single ECU, which actually I think Dan and, and Ward has also mentioned in their, their, their presentation. But what we are uh, needed to, as Dan mentioned, is to decoupling the software from the hardware, so which we, we need a logical architecture um, to do this, to, to, we, we need to have a, a two pieces. One is this kind of uh, hardware virtualization framework, oh. so which needs to decouple the software or say the operating system, for example, from the un underlying hardware. But we also need an application framework to decouple the application implementation from the underlying operating systems. So. So ECU consolidation is not just a purpose, but a, a method that uh, the true purpose is to establish the optimal, optimal architecture for evolution of software, that the software can be evolved, decoupling from the hardware or removing the hardware limitations. So we are looking at the history historical trend of the general computing architecture is always actually um, swing from the distribution and the centralization. So there is never a, a, a always uh, optimal architectures. So it really depends on the, the, the hardware and uh, the, 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 the situation and the, the use cases you want to achieve. So this kind of repeating the cycle between the, 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 the centralization and distributions, and we definitely see the same trend is happening in the automotive world. And especially when you're thinking about automotive, it's a little bit different from the uh, traditional um, um, server. So it's not only about the computing, but it's also about the different uh, peripheral devices, those kind of multimedia devices that uh, majorly <laughs> you will not uh, no use in uh, normal um, server use cases. And allocations of those different, dis uh, different displays, different cameras, a uh, can and whatever uh, peripheral devices to a, a, a different uh, uh, easy use will always be a headache for a uh, automotive developers. So this complicated natures of uh, devices and uh, applications of automotives makes a greater complexity 
for automotive. So what we need is actually really something that no matter how the underlying archi hardware architecture changes, we need a, a really um, uh, we, we need a really a, a, a good architecture that can be always applicable. So no matter how the underlying computing architecture has changed, a consistent objective is to decouple the applications from the underlying computer architectures, which is actually what I mentioned. We need a hardware agnostic virtualization framework to decouple the operating system from the hardware and an OS agnostic application framework to decouple the application from the operating systems. And this is the key to drive the industry shift from the hardware centric or say the hardware first to the software defined or say the software first. So in order to decouple this kind of software from the hardware so with device uh, virtualization, what we need is actually hide the real hardware logic from the software implementation of the applications. So software-defined vehicle needs really a common device virtualization framework to decouple this kind of uh, implementation of software from diverse hardware targets across various uh, uh, various vehicle variants, generations, so architectures such as a single ECU or multi ECUs, and development environments such as real ECU or the virtual ECU environment. So we, we definitely need this kind of a common device virtualization framework. So this is the, the actually what we, we, we talk about. We, we, we have the ECU consolidation and we need a, 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 a common device uh, uh, virtualization framework, but the original uh, frameworks usually have this kind of proprietary interfaces and we need this kind of standard interfaces that's capable to apply into different OS and different uh, hypervisor, different SOCs. And that's the, the background of the, the concept of WordIO, and it has been a really a, a, a good standard that uh, uh, having this, a standard specification in the OSCs and uh, a standard implementation in both Android and EGL, for example. So, so let's come about uh, what uh, uh, in AGL we are do, trying to do. So in AGL, we are trying to established a common device virtualization framework with WordIO to establish a complete and healthy ecosystem for the AGL to enhance the interchangeability and interoperability in various scenarios. You can see here, so from the traditional hypervisor environment to the non-hypervisor environment to even the multi-ECU environment or in the last, a cloud native environment. As I mentioned, I, I think this is uh, just uh, what uh, a, a, a detailed page on uh, about what I mentioned. If we have a, a fragmented interfaces, you will al always have a dependency on a specific uh, virtualization solutions, and uh, uh, you have to adapt to every single interfaces. You will uh, limit your software um, metagratability uh, meta to the other hardware and also cloud, for example. So we just want to throw that, and this is the word I.O. Uh, and uh, to give a, a, a simple introduction, so word I.O. is actually originated from the server world uh, in 2008. So it uh, originally um, e targeting for, the, for, for those kind of uh, server use cases, uh, like uh, uh, network or block devices, uh, but uh, it's really a good framework. Uh, but uh, we, we we think uh, this is very important also for the automotive industry. So um, we Panasonic actually um, tried to 
uh, extend this kind of a word or to cover the use cases of automotive, especially, for example, for the multimedia uh, and uh, for, for those kind of uh, vehicle communications part. And as a result, actually, we um, have supported WordIO uh, in the AGL since 2020. And with this common interfaces, we will have a really limited fragmentations. So all the interfaces will be very standard. And uh, we, we, we can select the different uh, uh, hypervisor or SOC and, uh, so that you can just uh, have a freedom of choice to, to complete your, 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 your product. Um, as, so this is uh, generally what we uh, have already done uh, in the AGL in the past uh, several years. So we have extended uh, most of the uh, multimedia devices and also like CAN to, to, to give this kind of uh, support. Um, so for the hypervisor environment, we can already see it's, uh, uh, complete, it's uh, basically we, we support most of the fundamental use cases for, the, uh, for covering the, 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 the basic AGL needs. Um, so, but beyond the, the traditional hypervisor environment, we actually uh, doesn't uh, stop at that point. We also considering uh, some other use cases. Um, for example, even you don't use uh, hypervisors as uh, maybe some, someone would like to use the containers or, or whatever architectures you, you, you want. Um, so what I can, can be also uh, utilize a, a, a low level hell to abstract the hardware. So in, in that case, we can, can achieve a real um, hardware agnostic uh, AGL ready BSB, which able to apply to any kind of hardware. Um, on the other hand, I think uh, in the last year, we are really, uh, the cloud native topic is really, really popular in the automotive field and more and more OEMs, uh, tier ones, and uh, vendors would like to develop the, uh, their software in a virtual environment. And where they will also uh, enable this kind of a capability to develop your software in another hardware, which is cloud. So cloud is just another applicant of uh, the, the hardware targets. So in this case, we can use the Wordtel as a common interface with the, uh, the cluster-based AGL and also different uh, um, edge SOC or hardware environment to achieve this kind of a common um, uh, commonality of the AGL software among various environments. Um, so for the details of this non-hypervisor environment, uh, as maybe uh, what has a little bit mentioned, uh, we um, actually complete 80% of the works, so like the, the GPU, like the audio, we have already supported. Uh, um, and uh, uh, what's going to next is that uh, uh, we are not only, only uh, limited to this kind of uh, maybe one ECU architecture, so we are also thinking about to extend this framework onto the uh, multi ECU architecture and also support this uh, non uh, hypervisor environment even in the cloud related uh, environment. And uh, for, exa for an example, we also having a collaboration with uh, ICEG uh, in progress which is to support the virtual sound with this kind of non-hypervisor environment, or, or say this container environments in the, um, in the AGL. And this is uh, under um, progress, and we hope something can be, um, be shown in, in, in CES or, or later. Um, I don't want to disclose uh, all the information in this session because there will be a, another uh, technical insights about the uh, non-hypervisor or say this kind of virtual loopback architectures uh, by uh, my EG colleagues, Michelle, and uh, he will give a, a presentation in, in the same room tomorrow. So and please uh, kindly drop by the sessions to have a more insights about it. 
Um, another topic uh, is also about the vertical uh, work for the multi ECU. So, um, as Dan and Ward mentioned, we called it unified HMI to uh, have a, a virtual display to uh, virtualize the old displays in the, in the vehicle to have a uni unified control or integrated control of the whole displays uh, uh, across the, the systems. So you can see it's mapping the multiple physical display into a single large virtual display so that you can put your applications, your, your, your layouts, your UI UX anywhere you like. And uh, this is, uh, um, this is uh, having no dependency on the underlying architecture. So whether you are using hypervisor, whether you are using one ECU, two ECU, three ECU, or whether you are using SOC A, or SOC B, whatever you like. So this actually enables a, 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 a trans, trans, transition from the legacy HMI system, which you have a strict restriction on ECU and function display, which you, you have to map every ECU with the specific applications or specific display. So which is really, you, you have a lot of dependency and a lot of restrictions in that case. And uh, this unified HMI or say this kind of a virtual display technology can um, enable such kind of a unified HMI uh, system that is fully flexible on the ECU and the function display relationship. You can have a many to many um, mappings of your your, your, your ECUs and display and, and uh, applications. So whatever um, physical layouts you, you want, you can achieve the, uh, the, 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 the UI UX as you like. I don't want to go to, uh, to the details in this session, but this is the general architecture. Uh, we are a, we actually for this unified HMI is also quite related with Vertio. We uh, we uh, uh, extended it from the original Vertio GPU to support it on the multi SOC or multi VM architectures. So for details of this unified HMI, I would like to also um, ask uh, everyone to attend another. Uh, technical insight sessions uh, tomorrow by another uh, um, SDVEG member, uh, Degui Jisong. So please kindly drop back and uh, jo join these sessions for me more details about the unified HMI technology. Um, so last is that uh, we also working on the uh, word tile for the cloud native environment. We have a, a collaboration with AWS also, who is also a, a core member of AGL. So we uh, enabled uh, this AGL with word tile on the, on the AWS Graviton. Um, and uh, this enables uh, a, a cloud native or seamless binary uh, exchangeable cloud native environment. Um, on the other hand, actually, uh, since WordL is actually cloud agnostic or hardware agnostic, you can also running it on, on Mac or, on, or any other hardware. So some of our, our EG members had already enabled the AGL running on, on its Mac OS. And uh, we did a demo in, uh, in the 2023 booth uh, with this kind of uh, uh, vertical related features uh, to enable the uh, identical software between the cloud and edge. So to give a, 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 a highlight or, or also so give a, a, break, uh, a, a break for everyone's uh, bring, I would like to show a small video. Today, we will show a demo of cloud native automotive development environment. This environment enables cloud edge binary parity and SOC agnostic deployment thanks to the standard device virtualization framework, VertIO. Let us introduce the demo environment first. On the left display, AGL is running on a virtual ECU on the AWS cloud. On the other hand, 
There are two automotive hardware used in this demo, a Renaissance reference board in the middle and a Qualcomm reference board on the right. In this demo, you will see how software development is done on the cloud without using physical hardware, and then the same OS binary will be applied to the two physical automotive hardware and works as it is. Now, let's look at the development on the cloud. We are streaming the graphics of AGL running in the cloud virtual ECU to the local browser through WebRTC. Touch and swipe operations work with low latency. With this system, developers can proceed with automotive software development while checking the behavior of the software, even if they don't have any physical hardware at hand. Next, we will update the software on the cloud. With the update, the latest AGL starts up and the appearance of the home screen changes. Next, we will apply the update made on the cloud to the automotive hardware with Renaissance Soak. Currently, the old AGL is running, but we will replace it with a new version. Because the software is large in size, we have stored it on a USB in advance. The hypervisor running on the hardware loaded the OS binary image from the USB and started up a new AGL VM. The OS build ID ends with 95E4, the same as the cloud. From this, we can confirm that the software developed in the cloud works as it is on the automotive hardware. Finally, we will show you that the same software also works on different automotive hardware. We will swap the software that was running on Renesas Soak to Qualcomm Soak. Here too, the same AGL VM started up. The build ID also ends with 95E4, the same as the cloud and the Renesas one. From this, we can confirm that the software developed in the cloud works on two different automotive hardware. Um, so this is the end of this uh, s s small demo video, but uh, actually it's uh, <coughs> illustrated the main concept of whether or that you can uh, running the same software binary across different hardware in the cloud in different SOC type. Um, so I would like to to to, to give a, a a last conclusion or say a, a moving forward to uh, talking about uh, uh, the future activities uh, uh, inside this SDVEG. Um, so first we will give a update uh, in the CES demo uh, to have this kind of a, a software defined or say the. Uh, cloud native unified HMI uh, uh, demos, so which actually combine the most of the features we have already uh, uh, developed in the SDV, e.g., the unified HMI, Vertio, and the cloud native technologies. We combine all this to these systems. You can design your your UI and UX, your your software on the cloud and then deploy the software to different architectures. For example, in the left hand side, it's using a two a Renaissance board uh, with uh, this two ECUs type. And on the right hand side, it's using another Qualcomm um, uh, SA8295 platform, which have a consolidated ECU. So no matter it is a consolidated ECU or distributed ECU, no matter it is a, what kind of a, a, a SOC type, and even it is cloud, so the, all the same software can be there. And you can uh, develop your software first and then deploy to the optimal hardware. <coughs> Um, as also oh, Dan has mentioned, we uh, in, in, in several early months, we have a, a, a big uh, changes in the uh, AGL that we combined the um, original virtualization expert group and the container expert group to this new SDV expert group. So unfortunately, we uh, haven't uh, yet studied, uh, uh, haven't yet started the uh, uh, container orchestration related activities. Actually, we are um, also uh, really desperate to see if anyone would like to join this EG and to work together with us to, to have this kind of a container uh, related technology so more uh, developed rapidly or say software or say a code first in the AGL community. Um, so last, 
but not least, as I mentioned, uh, we um, for the SDV, there are a lot of technologies, a lot of uh, things we have to do for the virtualization, for the containerization, for the kind of, uh, uh, um, you know, um, microservices, all this kind of power walls, and we, uh, we definitely hope uh, if anyone interested to join the EG discussion and to see if we can collaborate with each other to achieve this kind of uh, uh, software first approaches in the future uh, world of automotive. And thank you.